Hi, my name is Mike Hopkins. So I work for Imagination Technologies as a technical marketing specialist. Uh, so what I'd like to do is to just to talk about some of the wearable devices and the technologies that we've got going into the wearable devices. So currently in the market you will find a number of uh, smartwatch devices um, and uh, where, where we see these at the moment they're generally Android based. Um, these particular watches are both based on an Ingenic chipset. The Ingenic chipset is actually based on a MIPS architecture, so these are actually MIPS based smartwatches. Um, so they fully support Android, so with these devices here you can actually sort of swap around and you'll see the full Android operating system um, that gives you full functionality. So with a watch like this today, I can actually use this to uh, set up and download Android applications so I can actually control my home system, I control audio devices using this smartwatch. It integrates into my home system because it connects through to my wireless uh, network um, and then I can actually use that. Um, other things that I can do with my smartwatch are things like connecting to my mobile phone and using this as a pairing device. So all of my messages and text messages, emails and things I can actually read from my smartwatch. Now at the moment what we see in the smartwatch market is that the functionality um, is coming through and we're looking at how people are actually using their smartwatches to determine what is needed in the future. But currently one of the biggest sort of issues that you see with the smartwatches is that they only sort of need charging maybe every sort of day or every couple of days um, in order to keep them alive. So you notice these devices already have gone into power down mode, so they're really looking at how to save power by powering down. And what we see is the next level of integration and what we're working with are partners like iNeeda that are designing specific chips for the wearables market. So what they have on the next generation of chips that will come into smartphones towards the end of this year are devices that have multiple MIPS cores integrated. So what they do is they actually take multiple microcontrollers plus the higher end MIPS controllers and integrate that into a single SOC along with graphics functions functionality and also video decoding and more importantly the connectivity. So once you actually have a fully integrated specifically designed SOC, um, what you can do is to start to look at the main problem is power consumption. So if you can actually design it efficiently and with the chips that we've actually seen coming through which are available now, we can actually achieve rather than one or two days between charging, we can actually achieve 30 days. So you actually get a full month of use on your smartphone with no loss of functionality with a 30 days between charge. So what we're able to do is we're actually able to uh, put a full operating system of Linux or Android onto your smartphone so you've got full functionality. But you use the microcontroller functions to interface through two sensors. So what you can then do is that when I look at my watch, rather than having to uh, push a button on my watch to wake it up, as I have to do now, I could actually put that with an accelerometer and then just shake the watch and then it will actually sort of fire up and I can actually read the time. Whereas I lift the watch up to actually view it, so I lift the watch up, it will automatically turn on. As I put it back down again, it will switch off again. So again, it's about then creating the right architecture and putting the right cores within the device to create a compelling user experience. So what I see in the smartphone, the smartwatch market is that the smartwatches will then sort of develop over the next sort of couple of years with new next generation products coming through towards the end of this year. So the sort of thing that we can do as well is you can add graphics functionality. So you can actually then start to create sort of good user interfaces that are easy to use. You can, you can integrate the video core, which is already integrated on there. So we can actually play videos on, on the smartwatch. Um, and then as we look at the sensors and the connectivity, we actually put our connectivity, which is our InSigma connectivity core. So this allows me with the same watch, I can interface through to Bluetooth devices. So if I want to drive a Bluetooth speaker, I can just connect it directly to my watch. Um, or I can use the same core to connect to my Wi-Fi network and support up to 802.11ac. So any of my home devices or connected internet connectivity, I can actually now do with my smartwatch. And again, it's very, very low power and very, very efficient. So this is what we're calling the extreme low power solutions. And it's based on multiple core implementations of the uh, MIPS architecture. That really sort of uh, explains where we are today and where we start to see things going in the future. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye.